see, um, today the message I'm going to preach is, is going to make you very uncomfortable. Hallelujah. Uh, because um, as I walk through the cities and uh, walking to London, I realize that you people are too pampered. And so uh, from where we come from, our messages are quite aggressive. Hallelujah. Because our circumstance has drawn us closer to God. And when we look at you guys and the things that are happening, we have to come and wake you up. Hallelujah. Some of you have been sleeping for a very long time. So uh, today I have an assignment to wake you up. Hallelujah. Um, somebody came to us in Ghana you know the way we pray we pray quite aggressive I mean uh, be, if you are doing our fasting program our warming up prayer can just before we give the prayer topic can be about three hours we just warming up before we start hallelujah so um, one man came there and then I don't want to mention the country but he, he will be either from UK or US one of them so choose one hallelujah and so he was like why are you guys praying so aggressive and trying to let us feel as if what we are doing is wrong then but he was also very I mean if you come to what God is doing in the Porter city and he was like wow this is amazing and um, and I, I was trying to tell him I say the result of the way we pray is what you see and I said, it is foolishness to be shameful with that which is gainful. Right. You didn't hear what I said. Yes. Hallelujah. Right. It is foolishness to be shameful with that which is gainful. Right. So if the thing is working, why are you ashamed right. of it? Right. Hallelujah. Because, Pastor Paul, if you don't take care, the word is going to teach us how to serve the Lord. They don't know God, but they want to tell us how to serve the Lord, how to walk in holiness. You can't give what you don't have. Hallelujah. Because this, the knowledge of the secret of the kingdom is foolishness to those who are perishing. Are you getting it? So, man of God, sometimes they want to teach us how to pray. But do you know God even to teach me how to pray? Hallelujah. So I was trying to tell the guy, I said that if what you see here is very fascinating and you are surprised, this is the prayer that led us to it. Yes. Wow. And nothing commands respect than results. Yes. So, so, if you want to get results, if you want to get respect, that gets results. Once you have results, you get respect. Hallelujah. Yes. Nothing silences opposition like proofs. So if you have the proof that everybody will bow. Amen. Amen. Now, one great man of God came to our place to preach. And we were praying and was sitting down. And he was like really observing what is going on. When we finished, he finished preaching. And we went to my office and he said, Prof, I'm just feeling it. And I said, why? Well, he said, he has been in the ministry for quite a long time. One of the giants in Ghana. And he said, when we started... This is the way we used to pray. We started. But the problem we had was that you have something, then somebody comes and says, oh, this thing, you don't have to. Then they drop it. They don't value it again. They go and pick something. Then they realize that what they left was very good. So by the time they have to go back and pick it up again. I don't know whether you guys are ready for what we have to say today. Amen. Well, before I preach, I, Pastor Paul, I even think I have a word for you. Because this morning I wake up and I pray for a very long time. I prayed for a very long time. And I feel like um, the Lord told me to tell you and your wife. He said, you have a work. Yesterday, Dr. Jerry said something that really touched me. I went home and I couldn't sleep. I was just meditating about the word he preached. I, I was thinking about the fact that uh, he had a passion of riding the motorbike. I don't know how you call it. And then um, later he dropped it. And God said, go back for it because that's your passion. And he's using this to reach a lot of people. Sometimes when I go to America, 
you can see them riding and there are so many so i had a picture of what he was talking about and god has to use them and this guy how are you going to get to them if you are not part of them and so i was thinking and the lord said he has given you guys an assignment but this place will be too small for the work if i let me tell you what i saw if you don't believe me as a prophet just believe me for this one after that, you can drop it. Hallelujah. Forget about it. But believe me for this one. I literally saw this building off. It's not there. It's like I was coming and the Lord said, wake up and let me take you somewhere. And when I was coming, you see, yesterday I was coming and Kijo and he got missing and I have to direct him to come to. Um, that was very strange. The man was, oh yeah, that was a fact. Ask him. He almost I said, this is the road to harvest. So after that, Pastor Paul, you have to pray for him. I mean, literally, literally, I have to direct him to come to this place. So when God woke me up and I was coming, I saw it. And I couldn't find because it's like you come to a place, you know this is it. And you couldn't find it. So I said, oh, there are no more here. And the Lord said, they are here. And I saw that this place was going vertical extension. Watch this, watch this. What I saw literally was that as if we we're having a program. And people were descending from something like an apartment. But it looks like hotels. And they were coming down into the auditorium. And the Lord said, go and tell them, they must not relax. This thing, because, you see, I have not been, probably the whole of last year, I was not in Britain because of what we are doing in Ghana. At a point, God said, don't travel, just stay here. So we, we stopped traveling for some time just to stay around and do some things. And when I came around, I said, oh, these guys now believe in vertical extension because if you don't have horizontal extension, then you must have vertical extension. The interesting thing about vertical extension is that nobody is selling the airwaves. <laughs> so if you buy a land and you want to buy the next plot, you must pay for it. Right. But if you decide to go up, you won't pay for anything. I don't know about the laws of Britain, but that's what it is. But literally, when I came, the Lord said, go there. The structure is there. They are still here. But this time, I saw. So, I came here to give you a word. Yes. Wow. Number one, some of you are supposed to prosper. Who are delaying to prosper? And the purpose of that, you see, yesterday, Dr. Jerry Savez said something. It was very prophetic. He said that, he said, the, the reason for the blessing, Abraham, that you will become a blessing. So I am blessing you for a purpose, that you will become a blessing. So sometimes God has a reason. Oh, I don't think you guys are ready. I'm, I'll just finish this one quickly and get out of your way. Now watch this. So some of you, eh, you have the next 365 days. To become a millionaire yeah. you look at my face because you guys don't believe anything you see if i said this in ghana based on what we do people believe it yes people believe literally we said things I, I i i i where we are it is i don't want to go and preach to people who will not believe what i say Right. No. Yesterday, when Dr. Jerry Savet finished preaching, this is the conclusion of my matter. I say, these people are in a realm where they are walking in a realm where it is called just speak the word yeah, only. True, true. So, these people, where they are now, they are, they are not going to pray and then say, kneel down, pour oil. I have to force him to anoint me yesterday. I force him. When I say anoint, I say, man of God, I, I, where, where is, where is, where is, where is, um, no, 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 no. Um, what is Anthony? I told Anthony, I said, listen, I'm giving you the next two minutes. If you don't bring me an oil, what I will do to you, you leave this church. Go and find an oil and bring it to me. And they ran. I don't know where they got it. They came with the oil. I said, dog. Now, 49 years anointing. Your opportunity to meet it. No. I went to the bank. When I was coming, somebody blessed me with a seed. And then I went to cast the money. And I, 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 if I literally one day I went to, I was going to shop. I go to the shopping mall and the Lord told me, ask Uncle, the Lord told me, go home. He said, go home, leave your family here and don't touch the money, go home. 
And I left him. I told Akiju, I said, drop me at home. My wife said, what is going on? I said, no, I just want to go and I don't know. God wants me to be at home. So I left them in the morning. I came home. It happened twice. Second time I went, they said, go home. Yesterday I was coming. The Lord said, pick up the seed. I pick it. He said, the seed is not for you, for Dr. Jerry Saville. Wow. I told him. Yesterday I told him. He said, give it to him. And let him anoint you. Wow. I told Anton, I said, by two minutes, if you don't bring oil. <laughs> when I finish with you, you know that God has called me. The guy, I don't know, he came back with oil. No. <laughs> they were <will> running. <laughs> How aggressive are you yeah. to receive from the Lord? How aggressive? <laughs> How hungry are you? Yesterday he said something. He said, God only feel people who are hungry. Right. How hungry are you? Yeah. No. No. How are you going to get there? No. How hungry are you to receive from the Lord? You are just making a child like coming here, going back the same, coming here, going back the same, coming here, going back the same. No! We've left that stage. You can encounter God, walk out of this church, and you'll make your millionaire by tomorrow. I know God can do it. I know. I know. No, it's very difficult to believe in Britain, but in Africa, we believe it. We believe it. One of my leaders said, when we had a plot, we had a land in Pram Pram. And we go there and say, we are going to build here. When we went, we saw the land. And I said, we are starting the project. He said, he went back home and said, Lord, this guy has lost his place in God. <laughs> it's far. He said, it's unfortunate, Prophet Nana, God has left him. He said, how can you even think of bringing people here in the first place? He said, literally, he didn't come to church for about six months. Wow. And after six months, when he stepped into the ground, he said, I started crying. I said, Lord, forgive me. Wow. And then he was talking to me. I said, do you know the difference between you and I? I believe what God told me. Wow. I, yesterday, Dr. Jerry Saves saw something. He said that, oh, one of the quotes. If I don't have anything to preach, I can preach what he preached yeah. and then go away. Yeah. No. It also says, if you have not discovered yourself, use somebody's self. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. How do you believe? No, it's possible. If, if, if you are going to, I saw it. That's what I told you. Just believe me for once a prophet. I'm telling you. Yes. There are some things God showed me and I can't deny it. Yes. No. Yes. There are some things I can't. The way I saw Potter City, I saw it. I told the people, I say, I saw it. Yes. it nobody designed Potter City. Every road, everything I designed it. Yes. Because it's still in my eyes. You can see it from God and forget about it. Wow. Moses doesn't need to come. Listen. When Moses was building the tabernacle, yes. he just saw the picture. It was a prototype. So what you saw in heaven, what he brought, when he was with God for 40 days and 40 nights, God said, go and produce the same thing. He didn't need any blueprint. He just saw it. Right. He said, Abraham, as far as you can see. You. Hey. The reason your life is not changing is that, listen, I used to preach a lot about faith and people are not getting it. And people are not getting it. God told me, say, the problem is not the message you are preaching. If a child is not speaking, sometimes it's not about that. That I means get a, a speech therapy, check his hearing capacity. You can only produce what you can hear. If you can't hear it, you can't say it. So that is how faith works. That is how faith, you can't hear God and doubt him. It is not possible. The reason you can't operate in faith is that you are not hearing God. This is the difference. It is not possible, no matter how it doesn't appear sensible in the natural, if God said it, I'm telling you, I will not know how to describe it because Britain is an island. And so you are surrounded by water. But if it is Ghana, I can talk to you about Bogatanga, Upper West. If it's Nigeria, what is the uh, northern side? Huh? Huh? Kano, Kaduna. Kano Kaduna. So it's like, God called a man and said, go and build an ark. 
that would take two kinds of everything I've created, but build it in Bogatanga or Kaduna. There is a reason nobody entered the ark. If no one built the ark in Tamahabo, everybody would have entered. Your, the Hebrew writer said, by faith, Noah built the ark. Right. It became a tourist attraction. Now, the problem with the people is that, okay, no problem. We understand this thing you are doing. He, he, it took him 100 years to build the ark. He started building, according to Genesis chapter 1, when it was 500 years. He entered the ark when it was 600 years. 100 years ocean liner. Now, the problem with the people, they thought he has lost his mind. Okay, how are you going to get this thing to Tamahabo? How will you get you to Lagos? Show us how. How are you going to push this thing? He himself didn't know, but God said. He couldn't explain. The Bible said, the water went there and carried the ark. Everything was sinking. Only the ark was floating above the water. Everything. Did it make sense? If you and I were there, we could have mixed it. Noah has three sons. All of them came to marry. They went to Britain. They went to different families. One of them married a girl from Ghana. One from Nigeria. One from Liberia. Now, listen to it. This is the question. Rahab, won his family out of the judgment of God on Jericho. He said, when you come, remember me and my family. Yes. Now, where were the families of Noah's sons' girlfriends? Where were they? They didn't even believe their daughters went to follow a guy. They brought the guys home that these are our fiancés, you are going to marry them. And they told their mom that our father-in-law said God has spoken to him. And God is going to destroy the world with water. They didn't believe it. Only the three daughters got saved. All the family died. Think about it. You're not ready for what I'm saying. Anyway, I promise you, I'm not going to, by the time you say that, I'll finish preaching. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I just came here to wake you up. No. I came to wake, there are so many people, when I was coming in, when I saw the revelation, I said, I saw a crowd. Right. And in the crowd, you meet us, where are you going? He said, we are looking for Harvest Church. Mm. So there are people God is putting there. Now there's something about God I saw. Yeah, yeah, if you yeah. don't create the expansion from you, you won't feel it. Right. Wow. No. No. You won't feel it. That is why Paul says we keep building. We built a house of faith. It was sitting about 500. Then we built a house of prayer. It was sitting almost 3,000. Then I built another one sitting almost 5,000. I have started a foundation for 20,000. Wow. But that's what it is because God told me, open your mouth wide. I'm telling you, there are people looking for harvest. And it's not that God doesn't want to bring them. When they come, there will not be any space for them. Because somebody can come to church. And the person is like the woman at the Samaritan way. There are people, they are evangelists of their families. So if they walk into a church, about 100 people are following them. Now, if you don't have room for them, then they should stay. Because Jesus, it is not your plan. Now, let me tell you something. Pastor Paul, one of the greatest revelations God gave me, 2018, yes. I was in the presence of God, and God said that, hmm, Jesus, it's the greatest thing God has ever told me. That is what makes me become aggressive in getting things from God. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus was on his way to Jericho, to Jerusalem to go and be crucified. Bartimaeus was hang, sitting on the roadside. Right. Now, Bartimaeus was not on Jesus' agenda. So none of us here is on Jesus' agenda. It is what you do that makes you come on his agenda. You are not on God's agenda. The fact that you are in church does not mean you are on God's agenda. No. 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 None of us here is on God's agenda. It is what you do that makes you come on his agenda. How do I know that? He passed. He passed. He was going. And Bartimaeus starts shouting. The woman with the issue of blood, man of God, it's not on Jesus' agenda. It is what he did that make him come on Jesus' agenda. Amen. Who touched me? Yeah. Peter said, what are you talking about? Everybody's touching you. He said, no. Somebody has connected to the supernatural. So, if the woman didn't touch Jesus, Jesus could have. If Bartimeo didn't shout it, yeah. 
Jesus could have passed. He is not on Jesus' agenda. So you and I, we are not on his agenda. It is what we do that make we come on his agenda. Oh, come on. So you can sit in church. You will cry. You will not prosper. The fact that God has money that's not me is looking for you to give you the money. No. It is what you do. The fact that God hid that show me automatically is going to heal you. Yes. You are not on God's agenda. I am not on God's agenda. It is what we do that make us come on his agenda. If you are clapping, you are a Christian. Now be seated. I think I've finished preaching. So we, when I ask you to stand up there, we pray that we go. This is enough. Hallelujah. You see the way you are pampered. In Ghana, so that we can preach, nobody sit down. It's only harvest that you sit down. Here we do, in Ghana, we don't sit down. There are some messages you don't sit down to listen to. It. You must be standing to listen. Right. Mm-hmm. It's not every message you sit down to listen. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yesterday, Dr. Jerisa said, I can go on and on. I say that even this generation, we can stand and listen to God's word. You see, for us to encounter revival, we must be able to make time for God. Right. You know the guy who went to Jesus' crusade with five loaves and three fishes? His mother used to go to the crusade. The mom used to go. and said, this man, he can pray three days. So when he was going, he said, boy, are you going there? Let me give you some. Just in case the man. <laughs> <laughs> if Jesus is here, how many of you want to go to his church? Are you sure? You can't. You cannot be a member of Jesus' church. No way. No, no, no. Have you been reading the Bible? Yeah. Jesus? No. I was state now. You can't, you can't be a member of Jesus' church. No, when I see the way if you are evangelists pray for people, it's different from Jesus' crusade. Right. We pray for people and somebody is a cripple, you want to walk, and then evangelists try to hold you and say, come up, please walk a little bit. Jesus, take up your bed and walk. If you like, sit down. <laughs> And once he said that he's on his own, can you go to Jesus' church? Oh, you, don't, you are not ready for what I'm talking about. <laughs> you see, you read the Bible, but you read it and you are reading a storybook. That's Jesus. Jesus is going to pray for you and hold your hand. Oh, please. Somebody's hand was, we say, stretch your hand. If you like, keep it there. <laughs> oh, that's Jesus. He's not going, and he will not give you any helping hand. It's a pure adventure of it. The way you want to fall sick for us to come and visit you. No. Some people are excited in the church. They are sick. And pastor has to come and visit me. No. Jesus, he won't come. No. Somebody traveled from Manchester, maybe Sunderland, and came back and said, my son is at the point of death. Jesus said, go and your son leave it. Go. The Bible says, and the noble man believed. He believed. That's why you are mixing it. Hallelujah. No. This plot where you are is too big. I'm telling you. This is a sometime learn about the kingdom. Eh? When, we are go- when we're going to start Potter City, God gave me the vision. I saw it very clear. I've been prophesying it from dead in power. And I saw it. I, people have tapes. And people have seen me talk about I saw this thing right from dead in power. You see... There's something about seeing. Eh? Yeah. If you see and others don't see, they can even fight you for what you see. That is the truth about the thing. It is one of the signs of the prophetic. Yeah. Because the thing you are talking about, eh, it is not normal, it is not natural. You can't. What are you talking about? But I saw it. And when you see it, you can't doubt it. And when you see it, eh, it will give you sleepless nights. Yeah. If God gives you a vision, eh, he will make sure you are not comfortable until it's fulfilled. Amen. Listen to me. Do you know the reason why you are so comfortable in church, sitting down, cross your leg, drinking Milo and green tea and white tea and all kinds of things? You don't have a vision. You have not encountered the supernatural. Because, so, you see, you can come to church, eh, all your assignment in this church is to pray for this man and woman of God. It is your assignment. Everybody here, you have an assignment. Every calling of God is a high calling. Yeah. Even if you are sweeping the church, it's your calling. Right. Every calling of God is a high calling. No calling of God is greater than the other. No, 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 no. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Yeah. That 
The reason you are so comfortable is that you have not discovered your son. I was preaching to some guys in, a, in Ghana and I said that, you know why you are committing fornication and adultery? You have not had the picture of your future. Wow. Wow. No, no. If God gives you a revelation about what is going to make you, there are some life you will never live it. No. Do you know the reason why Joseph didn't touch me, says Potiphar? That is a Dubai woman. <laughs> Very irresistible. What have you gone to Dubai? Have you seen them? No. Some of them are walking around. If you see them, watch them. I'm talking about a Dubai woman standing, thick and tall, almost half naked. Now, the guy said, I saw the moon and the stars. And the stars were bowing. And later the moon joined them. This is what Jacob said. So do you mean me and your mother to bow? So he has a vision of where God is taking him. Mrs. Potiphar, you can't break this one. The reason you are messing around in church and we can't talk about church, you don't have, nobody has to preach holiness for you to stop that nonsense. Nice. You don't have a picture of your future. If you know where God is taking you, there's some life you will never live there. Amen. Never. Amen. never. If your husband can stop you from serving God, I told one woman, I said, listen to me, your husband is your husband, he's not your Lord. When he comes to heaven, it's a personal decision. You are not going to have it because you're married to a pastor. So I told him, I said that, don't let the guy stop you from serving Jesus. If if it will cost you the marriage, let it cost you your marriage and go to heaven. That's a reason why, if you have the picture, if you know what God has called you to do, Jesus Christ. Nobody will encourage you to come to church. No. So we have to send you a text message to come to your program. And we add over the place, we will we, we, we'll meet you at the gate. Oh. You don't have, no, no, no. We don't put them as encourage you. You should be the first to be here. Amen. Now, somebody wanted a child. Man of God. After church, when the old prophet lifted his hand, he said, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. When they finished the benediction, Hannah stayed. Say, no, Lord, I've not finished with you. I have finished with the pastor, but I've not finished with you. We have to settle some things here today. I used to think Pinana is my problem. It's not a problem. The problem is not fighting with your arrival. Your problem is getting a child. Period. There are some battles you avoid them. No. Enemies are as necessary as friends. The reason why you have enemies is that they will get you closer to God. Period. If you don't have enemies, you can't get closer to God. Pinana is the reason why Hannah was able to bear Samuel. Without that pressure, if it's the husband alone, he has doubled his housekeeping money, but it will not still solve the problem. You are getting it wrong. You are not getting it right. No, don't deceive yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. I say amen, so you better respond. That's what it is. If you have the picture of your future, nobody must encourage you to serve God. Where you are going in your state now? Wow. Today I told my wife, I say, don't let anybody fool around. You can have a revival last year and mix it this year. Nothing of God's blessing is permanent. You need another generation to carry the baton. Yeah. It's not enough for you to serve God. Are your children serving God? Right. This is the way you keep the generational blessing. Amen. No. This country, in John Wesley time, everybody walking in the street of London is almost born again. Yeah. Whoever thought. We have a work to do. When we are sitting here, all of us in this room, eh, it is like Elijah's time. When the people said that, the prophet was almost trying to curse. He said that, they, they, they've killed all your prophets. I've left for myself 7,000. Nobody knew them, but some of them were in Wembley. Some of them were worshipping in, in the leadership training center. Nobody knew them. There are people walking in the street of London. They think everybody is like them. 
They think everybody is a Muslim. They think everybody is a Halawa Hakubar. That's what they think. And when they don't see you that way, they think that something is wrong with you. But nobody is going to be on that line. No, God must leave himself a remnant. I remember Apostle Ken God was standing in port and said, Prophet, pray for us. He said, pray for us. Pastor Paul said the same thing. He said, pray for us. We brought the gospel to you, but now we need it from you. Pray for us. That is the reason why you must not break relationships. Everybody God brings in your life. When you allow that relationship is cut off, it didn't go because you were angry. Satan knock it off. That's what it is. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody in your life, God has a reason for putting them in your life. Amen. Yes, you need them. Amen. You may seem like you don't need them tom- today, but you need them tomorrow. Amen. If you don't need them tomorrow, you need them next year. Amen. God, my goodness. Even when you study the Bible, God uses our mistakes yes. for his own plan. I'll see people preach and say, Abraham had a mistake of, 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 of sleeping with Hagar and producing Ishmael. Fine. That is your point of view. That is your way you see it. But check God's plan. When God has to preserve the Jews, do you know the reason why God sent the Jewish people to Egypt at that time? Everything in the Bible works according to God. You see, from the time God promised the seed of the woman, Satan was looking for the seed to kill. Right. If, the reason why God killed everybody in Noah's time was not because God is interested in killing. He doesn't say he's not interested in killing. At that time, the Bible said, the angels of God has come on earth and slept with the woman, and they were producing abnormal people. Probably, in my opinion, the only house they've not contaminated the blood is Noah's house. So in order to keep the Jewish blood so that Christ can be born, I must kill everybody so that I can raise the generation again with this pure blood. Now watch this, watch this. When they went to the land of Canaan, they went to do a covenant with the Canaanite. Jacob's children say, we'll give our daughters to you. We'll also marry your son, which is not part of God's plan. So what we're going to do is that by the time, that's why we have the Samaritans, we have this. Oh, it's not because God has to keep a certain blood. He has to keep a certain seed just to raise the Messiah because a prophetic word from the Garden of Eden, the seed of the woman. Even when he said that women don't have seed, it is interesting. God promised the seed of the woman. I mean, when you read about women don't have seed, they have only egg. Yes. But that time, everybody's spermatosia was in Adam. So when Adam sinned, every, that's why even when you were a pastor, your son must be born again. Because the seed that produces the child is sinful. So if Adam birthed a Messiah for us, he will not be qualified to save us. I'm preaching. Yes. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So God said, the seed of the woman. How is that going to be possible? When I read the Bible, if the Bible cut it off there, it's going to be a big argument. How is a woman going to get a seed? How is he going to get himself pregnant? You see, when the angel came and said, Mary, you are going to get pregnant. You told the angel, how can this be? Since I don't know a man. Eh? But if I'm taking you back to the garden and produce you like, that's what Jesus is called, the last Adam. Who is the first Adam? What is the state of the first Adam? Then you going back to the garden must have the spirit and the body of the first Adam. The first Adam, watch this. The first Adam, you see, that is why Adam is never a carnal man. One day God told me something. Don't ever deceive yourself that the devil is afraid of anointing. He's not afraid of anointing. Two reasons. Number one, he has been anointed before. Right. His only angel referred to as anointed cherub. That is number Number two, if the devil is afraid of anointing, he will never have tempted Adam. Because Adam is the most heavily anointed man God has ever created. You cannot compare Moses to Adam. No, you can't. If I went Jesus Christ came, he draw a line of demarcation and said that if you are talking about Adam, he is not part of your race. Give me Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. Let me show them something. The way they are looking at me, as if I'm coming from Jupiter. Give it to me. Just give me Matthew chapter 11. I saw you putting the scriptures on the screen. You should be able to do it for me fast if you want to get a man to marry you. I can't see who is there. Are you married? No. So do it fast. Uh huh. <laughs> now, verily I say unto you, among them that are born of what? Amen. Who is Adam's mother? I'm asking you a question. This is Jesus talking. Among them. So this is the scripture that, that separates Adam from the human race. Wow. Among them that are born of women. It means Adam is not in this group. Wow. 
He said, there is nobody greater than John the Baptist. It means that none of them can be compared to Adam's greatness. Wow. So when he said, among them that is born of women, he separated Adam from the root. He said, he's not part of it. Now, he's so heavily anointed that he named things God created without editing. That's number one. Number two, forget about the things he named on earth. What about those under the sea? This guy is a heavily guilty anointed guy. So he said that among them that are born of women, there is no reason greater than John the Baptist. Adam is not in that group. So Jesus has to be the last Adam. Now, how was this guy Adam created? He, God waved him with the clay and God breathed. Is that correct? And the Bible says Adam became what? So the second Adam must be born the same way. The last Adam. Now, now these are two different. These two different things. In the case of the first Adam, it was a clay. And God breathed. And then he became a living soul. In the case of the last Adam, God breathed into a woman's womb. Wow. Something. So the Holy Ghost will come upon you. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. And that holy thing shall be called the Son of God. Just a setup. Should I stop? No. We are not going to do all night. So get what you are going to get because I'm going to cut it. I've already, I've already preached half of my message. Hmm? Hallelujah. Because if I continue preaching next time, I won't get anything to preach. I must keep something for, to preach next time. Amen. No, that's right. Give the Lord a wave. How wonderful. Yesterday I was sitting, Dr. Jerry Savio was preaching. I said, how wonderful is the word of God? I mean, you can, it can't, wow. And the word was made flesh. So it can catapult itself. It can change from liquid to solid. So the word can come in. And once the word is coming, it can create a new womb. It can create a new liver, a new kidney. And the word was made flesh. It has power. So when the word of God is coming and you are trusting God for a child, you can open your womb, zoom, the word will enter. Listen to this one. Oh, Pastor Paul. Oh, this is, thank God for this anointing oil. I anoint you together. But the Bible says he didn't send healing. He sent his word. So he's not sending prosperity. He sent his word. Amen. And when the word enter your pockets, Susa Susia Baya. Don't try to speak in that tone. It's not for boys and girls. It's a very, it's a very strategic tone. Hallelujah. Sent his word. You believe it. That is it. Yeah. If I didn't believe Potess, it would never have happened. No. That is the time I saw that. Wow. Listen. Hmm. Association is very important. You see, for God to let me build Potess, I was fasting. He said, wake up and go to South Korea. I went there. When I came by, he said, go to redeem. Do you know what? All the architects that designed the structure, I took them to South Korea. We went to the prayer mountain. I put them there. God said they must see to produce it. Then I took them to redeem Christian camp. Then I took them to Canaan. So when we came back and people say it's big, they have already seen something. Do you know why you are building so much more things you have not seen anything? Woe unto you if nobody challenges you. Yes, that's the you must always have people in your life that stretches your feet. Yes. If you don't have those people in your life, you are in pe- Oh, give the Lord a shout and preach. Yes. You must have people in your life that will make sure that you will not be comfortable in your discomfort. Yes. You can be comfortable in your discomfort. Yes. That's why we need a lot of humility to work with God. Yeah. We need a lot of humility. We need a lot of meekness. You will sit here and only celebrate your past glory. Oh, we used to be very prayerful. What is happening now? Oh, we were the people that used to support harvest. How much is your tithe now? We are not talking about the past. God is not interested in that. Oh, yes. 
But it's your tight now. One of the things I saw about God, eh, I was standing in, 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 the, in South Korea on the prayer mountain. The same word he said is the same thing he said when I was standing in, in Redeem. Wow. God said, if it is me, it can be done everywhere. So if it is God, eh, it can be duplicated. The only thing you cannot duplicate is, I saw, but if it is from the law, whatever. Bishop Hoy Depot said, I went to Robert University. When I saw the city of faith, I said, God, is it you? Then he stayed on that anointed to go and build Canaan, uh, what do we call it? Covenant University. Because if it is God, then it can be done everywhere. So if it is God, harvest can pull all this structure down and go eight stories up. When I went to Dr. Young Joe's church, eh, that is what I saw. It was a small land, but it was a vertical extension because the church sit about five floors with elevators. And, and, and as some of the elevators are taking those who have closed the service out because when they close their service, you need five minutes to get a seat. They have to wait for the next service. And they do service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Two hours interval. One million people. So you can sit here and talk. I was standing in part. The Lord told me, he said, don't waste the land. Right. Today, because of the vision I've seen you now, you think you have a big land. Ten years to come, this land will look nothing. Yeah. Begin to think about going up. Because I'm not selling the air. They are selling the ground, but nobody is selling the air. Because the land is not for you, so you can't sell it. That's what it is. So I begin to tell the architects, okay, this is the vision. We can't stretch our faith beyond certain capacity. So... The structures we are putting on them, design the foundation for 10 story. Let's go to three and stop. As God blesses us in the future, we take the roof and we continue. We don't need to come under because if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? So the important thing about the structure is the foundation. What is your foundation? Too much relaxation. Let me tell you something. The British church is relaxing. Too much. People are too pampered. Wow. You are relaxing too much because you drive nice cars. All the, when I came, to all the cars outside new, new. All of them new cars. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, new cars, nice cars. Range over, this, 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 this. No, so people are not praying in Ghana. No, 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 no. You can mix the bus. It's not talking. You see, somebody told me, say, one guy came and say, when I declare fasting, he said, Daddy, you are in a spirit. I said, why? I say, me, myself, I don't have anything to buy food. So the way you have declared the fasting is good for you. <laughs> That's what it is. No, but you see, those people can pray, pray. Within a short time, God changes their life. Because one of the things that somebody asked me, said, why do you love fasting so much? I said, I read the Bible. Every fasting prayer in the Bible, God answered it. Yeah. Every. There is only one fasting prayer God did answer. Apart from, I look, look at the way they are looking at my face. <laughs> like, I, one woman was sitting there. Oh. Come and take the microphone and preach. <laughs> Every fasting prayer. Hey, Esther used it to turn the judgment of King Hazarus. He has already signed the thing. The Bible says when he saw Esther's face after three days fast, he obtained favor. Only one fasting is the fasting of when David slept with Bathsheba. The child that they produced, David fasted for three days. God still let the child die. But even then, he compensated that fasting by putting the next child on the throne. Because Solomon was not supposed to be Adonijah and those guys were there. How did Solomon come there? Every fasting prayer, the, uh, God was going to kill the Israelites. And Moses turned to the tabernacle for fire. And the Bible said, the Lord repented. God is repenting. This is the word God used. This is the word the Bible used. Keep on eating. <laughs> no, that's what it is. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. When I, when I look at the spirit that has entered your country, it will take fasting. Yes. Strange spirits. Strange spirits. I'm telling you, you, some of you don't have eyes, so you just walk around, and everybody is nice. Wow. Wow. You are right, bro. Oh, yeah. Wow. We're, we're in America, and we wanted to go to a certain restaurant. We, I, I got to the restaurant. When I entered, the Lord said, what are you doing here? I said, we came to eat. <laughs> when he opened my heart, I saw, my wife was there. Girl, were you in that thing? Atlanta, I said, 
I said, let's go. I said, what is happening? I said, let's go. <laughs> wow. But all my friends, one of my friends said, well, <laughs> the prophet said we should go. If you like, go and eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wow. Not everywhere you eat. You, you, you see, the gift of the spirit is given to protect us. Right. One day God told me something, you see, yes. if Satan is operating outside you, it's not dangerous. But he come to, and he can come to you through food. I can tell you, eh? most of the sickness we are struggling with there, eh? I'm telling you, I tell people, sometimes I tell people in Ghana, when you go to funeral, don't eat. Yes. I tell them. Those who have disobeyed me and went to eat, oh, they really ate and they came back so that they have eaten. <laughs> the thing they are dealing with now, I'm telling you. Because in Africa, once they see that body, all the witchcraft spirit project themselves. But you have to have a revelation. No, I'm telling you. You have to have a revelation. My, my, no, it's not even every funeral you go. That's right. My, my auntie, my mother's sister, grandfather, one mother, I'm on air, but I will still say it. I mean, tight. I was getting ready. So the Lord said, don't step there. When my brothers were going, I warned them. I said, you see. And I gave them a picture. When I showed them one to my brother, I said, mm, mm. I said, go. <laughs> no, you see, you see. It's not that there's no water. There's water there. But Hagar, unless God open your eyes, Ishmael is dying. He said, I don't want to see the death of the child. Right. The Bible said an angel opened his eyes yeah. and he saw a well of water. He said, then the, the water was there. There are some things around you that if God has seen, open your eyes. Yeah. And those who are not clapping, give me one reason why you are not clapping for Jesus. Tell me, and I'll continue preaching. We came here, we booked a place that we are going to stay with the family. When we got there, they show us the place. When I went there, I didn't tell anything about my wife, but I didn't want to sleep there. They showed me a place first. When we went there, my spirit was comfortable. They said, no, no, this is not your place. You're supposed to go to the next floor. That's Uncle Joe. I got there, what I saw, I said, no, nobody's sleeping here. And this is what they told me. They said, you must pay this extra money. There's no difference. The same rooms, the same size, but they say extra money. I told my wife, my wife said, let's go there. We won't pay anything. I said, girl, we have to pay. So that you must pay money and save some things. Right. You can keep money and go and sleep there. The things you fight, yeah. you can't come out. I paid the money and I keep the family there. Wow. Wow. When people are protecting money, <laughs> this country. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> I'm telling you, the reason for prosperity is that God will use it to defend ourselves. It gives you options. That's why poverty can be dangerous in serving God in our generation. No. You can go to a place and your pocket will save you from something. Solomon said money answers all things. It is applicable in the natural. So it's not good for you to serve God in this generation when you are broke. Yes. Thank you. Listen to the things you are telling. No, it's not I want to visit somebody and I told my wife, I said, as I walk through Britain, eh, there are certain communities that eh, if you live there, you can never prosper. No, no, I'm telling you. Next time when I come, I'll show you more things. Today, no, I'm not going to go into prophetic. I'm not ready for this. No. People's weather in my spirit, I'll come next time and give it. But listen, wait, are you the one who carry the word? Are you the one who should come and give you a word for you to prosper? No. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. We, we, we don't need to start professing yesterday. We have been doing this. I've done all night in Ghana close to 18 years. So keep quiet. <laughs> no, so I'm telling you. We need it. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was living in a place in, in I, Pastor Paul always knows where I live, in Manet. It was a nice place. I even did a swimming pool there, a small one. Comfortable. I mean, there's a place that you can come to a place and think you have arrived. No, I was sitting there, I was so, I was okay. I mean, 
I, as far as I'm concerned, the area of my house is the nicest. I've done extension. I've done uh, a story building. I've, uh, I've guest rooms. Oh, I think Pastor Paul, you even came there. Yeah. One day I was there, the Lord said, leave this place. I said, to where? <laughs> Go to where? He said, leave. And the Lord told me, he said, if you have grown a place and you're still living there, you attract arrows. So some of you, eh, there are certain cars you drive. Even the community where you live, is dangerous to live there. I said, where do I go? He said, go to Trasaco. So try what? I said, do you know what I'm talking about? Now listen, I, I, you see, you can hear God. <laughs> Don't read the Bible. And I understand some things as a prophet. No, I understand some things. Moses, okay, you are afraid. Put your rod down. Pick the rod by the tail. So he's trying to kill fear from the guy. No sensible person pick a, a, a serpent by the tail. You pick it by the neck. He pick it a time. He say, I will, I will still not go. I won't go anywhere. Put your hand in your bosom, bring it, let us put it back. Here, I won't go. You see, there is, there is a place you come to where it's not that you are not hearing God, but your spirit is not ready. Wow. Wow. No. What did God say? You see, one day I asked the Lord a question. I said, you promised Abraham that they will be in bondage for 400 years. How did they stay for 430? Yes. He said the deliverer was not ready. You see, that, that, that encounter at Mount Isena, it lasted for 30 years before Moses get ready to move. So the problem is not God missing the timing. That is why we can't sit here. It is irresponsible Christianity to say God will do it, God will do it. Somebody went to Benin City. In the, in the time of Archbishop Benson, in the host of blessed memory. You see, when people don't want to take responsibility, they push it on God. And then when they came and saw what had happened, they said, Whoa, look at what God has done. Archbishop said, when God alone was in charge, this place was a bush. I, I joined with God for the thing to happen. So tell that me and God. So are you getting what I think? Yeah, that's what it is. No. If you do that, you won't do anything for God. God needs you. He needs your money. Right. You must, if you don't prosper, you are selfish. Yeah. It took me so many years to see that poor people are selfish people. That's Africa, we live in selfishness. There is a road in Ghana. Eh? It is called M1. It's a very powerful road. President Bush came to do the road. You see, I was watching television when they came to cut the sword, whatever they do. And they built the road for Ghana at the time when they were in recession. They were in credit crunch when they came to build it. So in terms of their financial crisis, they were giving. And they came to build. Now listen, listen, listen. They came to build the road for us. Do you know sometimes God doesn't ask you money when you have plenty? Because it's not the money. He doesn't need your money. You are too small to sponsor his kingdom. You can get down. He just wants your faithfulness. Abraham, if you can kill Isaac, you will give me everything I ask you. After all, what at all? If you are ready to kill Isaac, that's why God swear. You are ready to kill Isaac, then I'm ask you for cows. You won't struggle to give it to me. The reason God is struggling with you is that there is something you are sitting on that God is looking for. Oh, I'm preaching. Yeah, uh, you, see, you see, it's getting quiet. That is better. You are talking about that. Nobody's going to collect your money. You keep it in your pocket. Jesus will come and meet you. One day, I was sitting there, the Lord told me that, go and close this bank account and put the money in this work. And then I was struggling, the Lord told me that, okay, if the rapture happens now, what will happen to your money? Do you know that all the money you are holding, when the rapture comes, it will be for the Antichrist. <laughs> Keep holding it. <laughs> oh, that's what it, that's the truth. All the money you are saving, the day the rapture comes, we are all gone, what will happen to your bank account? The Antichrist will use it. I'm preaching. No, these are all things in the Bible that you are not thinking. You are not thinking about it. Is my time up? No. Are you the one who invited me? <laughs> Push somebody and say, let's do something for Jesus. Let's do something for Jesus. No, no, touch another person. If he doesn't mind, say, let's do something for Jesus. Wow. No, we got to do something for Christ. Hallelujah. It's possible. I'm telling you, it's possible. 
Yes. If you have not started, you see, you can. That's what important. Say, we have never built thinking about estimators. Somebody come and value something, and then say, okay, this one will cause that. If you do that, I'll remove two sets of your teeth. Do that. <laughs> we built by faith. You see, I sack an administrator. He came to me one day with a board and say, Daddy, that's what they call me. I said, What is it? He said, The way the project, we are doing this, we are doing that, we are doing that. How can't we concentrate on one? I said, Has God come to complain to you? <laughs> Has God come to tell you that he's having financial problem in heaven? I said, You are fired. My wife begged, I said, No, this bank cannot hang around me. Wow. Has God complained? Fire her straight. So where we are going? No. God say, let them drink the water. You see those who are with you. Gideon, wow. it's not a crowd. Pastor Paul, don't ever believe it's not a crowd. Right. You don't need crowd to accomplish it. You need faithfulness. Yeah. No. You need some people that are faithful, people that are loyal. Hey. I saw students give here. I counted that before. We have built over 50 something structures. Importance 50 something, some story buildings. Wow. We're building, we just started phase two project bigger than phase one. No one, we started the project with 40,000 Ghana CDs in our bank account, and we we're owing 25. So, how much do we have? <laughs> because when we we're living in Tama, the people there were coming to collect their rent, and when we take the 25 and give it to them, we have 15, and we started. Come there and value the structures. So you don't, it, God, I, I'm telling you, we, we, we finish, my, they put on the plan, I put the plan there on the altar. I remember I, was, I went to the church to pray alone. Moshe, and which bank should we go for loan? And I put the banks there, Echo Bank, uh, Barclays, this, this. Lord, choose one for yourself. Moshe, Toko, Paul, I'll tell you the truth. The Lord said, foolish boy, go and sleep and stop with that kind of thing that you are going to do. I received a call from Chairman Clement, the chairman of Hunting Gate, Reverend Switcher. He said, oh, no, no, there's a particular bank there. They are very good. They have a special, uh, what do we call it, package for churches. Wow. And I've, I just learned that. I, 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 I preached for that bank, and my wife used to work there. I said, chairman, hiya, tu, 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 tu. They will receive me. And the Lord came to me and said, you dare not go for a loan. You see, maybe it cannot work. I'm not saying don't go for a loan when we need it. But there's something called the dealings of God. Yeah, God right. can deal with a man of God different from the way you deal with this one. Absolutely. Totally. So God told me, say that, listen, this is Africa. Because the danger of Africa loan is that it's not like your system loan. <laughs> no, our loan there is different. When you take a loan to buy a car, by the time you finish paying, you buy 10 cars in addition. <laughs> It's a different thing altogether. Our system is different. No, it's not encouraging to go for a loan in Africa. Number two, some of the, some of the people that give the loan, they are so aquatic that if you are church, you go for a loan, you cannot produce anything. Yeah. If I, when you are going for a loan, you have to even pray for God to guide you. There are some people, when they give you a loan, you will never make profit in life. Wow. It's a covenant. It's a demonic covenant on the organization. Wow. I like the way you are looking at me. Huh. Ah, I wish God would give me the permission to open your eyes, but let me know go there. We'll do that in another time, Reviver. You see, today when I was coming, I told God, you see, you can't come and do something one day, leave it in suspense and go. It's not good. Hallelujah. Now watch it. Let me end. Let me end this way. So, I sat down and the Lord said, listen to me. You don't, you dare not go for a loan. He said, if you take a loan, you can never sustain it. Wow. And you lose everything. And you'll be under so much pressure, you run away from this country. Because where we are going, no, but I'm telling you, I will never have peace. Never. We have never borrowed once from any bank. Once. And it's millions of dollars. So how are we going to build? He said, I never ask you to get money to build. Believe me to build. Ah. Oh. I came to check the first day. I said, okay, so how do I believe you? He said, go and start the project. Dig the first foundation. Tell people. I told them, I came to the church and I said that. People should bring cement, iron rods, and that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I saw people bringing articles. Up to date, it happens. January, I was preaching. I saw articulator loads of cement. Up to date, we don't even know who brought it. Wow. We don't know. We don't know who brought it. Wow. 
One day I was there, they told me, that the, the workers cannot come to work tomorrow. It was on Thursday. We're going to have an all night on Friday. Saturday, they won't come. I said, why are you stopping? They say, we don't have cement. I said, allow them to come. They say, okay, if they come, what are they doing to work with? I said, keep quiet. You want to be fired? <laughs> Tell all of them to come to work. Okay. I think the architect almost wanted to resign. <laughs> you have over 200 workers. If they come, they don't have anything to work. You have to still pay them. Because God has told me, don't stop this project except on Sundays. Okay, I stood on his way. Let them come to work. We closed an all night and we saw an articulator coming with cement. Wow. Who is this? It was followed by a Range Rover. He said, I'm an elder of Pentecost. I was sleeping this night. The Lord told me, bring cement to Portis. Wow. Okay. Wow. Brought the cement. I don't know how many bags are in the articulator. No. No. If you don't take that step, a lot of you sit in Britain think that you need money to own a house. That is why you still don't have a house. Yeah. We put the spirit inside them. I stood at the church in Port and said that if God did this thing here in three years, if you use six months to build a house, you are, you are a disgrace. Like we, we don't say that the way we say to pamper you. We say very strong. And I told them, I said that nobody should come in to dedicate your house that you use one year to build. It's too much. God built the whole world in six days, so you wouldn't need one year to build a house. Your two-bedroom house is too much. It's too small for God to do it in three years. Do you know people are building from foundation to completion in six months? I ran the portes. I've dedicated several. It's just the word of God entering you and picking it up. I've dedicated people's buildings. Some of them started ba -ba 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 -ba, five months. Everything finished. How can they believe I said someone pray to them? Right. right. So it comes by here. Yes. Amen. Association is very important. Yes. Yeah. Who are your friends? Hmm? Some of you come to church, all the people working around you is talking about, so do you pay those that thing called tight? Oh, yes. Ah, so you give the money to the pastor to chop? <laughs> Don't laugh. I'm talking about you. <laughs> no, you have, you have another preacher in the office. Who doesn't know anything about Christ? Right. No. Who can preach me out of? You see? That's a point. When I went to Israel and I entered the tomb of Jesus, I was sitting there. I came back. Who can come to me and tell me that Jesus Christ didn't rose from the dead? Right. It's one thing to hear. It's another thing to experience it. I had a testimony from Papa Debo. He said, the day he was entering the tomb, he heard the voices, stand there, Enoch. And he said, listen, where you are going, the man went there dead and came back alive. Wow. So when you go there, you must not come back the same. Wow. He said, I have two major encounters in my life. He said, the first encounter was in South Korea at the prayer mountain. Next one was the tomb of Jesus Christ. Because God said it. No, the testimonies I have about Titan, who can preach me out? I am not talking about, no, no. You see, you don't have a personal testimony. That is why, that's why we, we can toss you here. Christianity without testimony is equal to frustration. If it's not true, I'm telling you. That's what it is. You must have a personal testimony about what God, you cannot, what are you talking about? You can come and stop, you can come and tell me that don't preach. No, no, no. I got trained in prayer by Reverend Piakofi. I saw myself grow up in prayer. And I, I, I mean, one day when he came to Port Arthur, I said, Papa, this is what prayer can do. Right. So you can't come and preach me and tell me that stop praying. You, right. you have lost your mind. Right. I have a testimony about the prayer. I don't care how I pray. If you come and say, you pray, ha, ha. You say, you have lost your mind. Okay, you, you that say, I've lost my mind. No, 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 no. Let's say, what do you have compared yes. to what we have? Any result. May the Lord give you results as a result of your prayer life. May something happen to you that you will get glued to Jesus Christ. This is my testimony. This is my story. When everybody thought that is the end of your life and suddenly you take off. Have a testimony. Oh. 
And if it can happen there, this is a better economy. This is a better economy. The problem is not God. The problem is you. I used to think God is waiting for. One day he told me, he said, you came to meet me here. So who is waiting for who? I was here before you came. So who is waiting for who? I used to think we are waiting. He said, we are waiting on the Lord. We are waiting. God is waiting for us. Because he was there. You have never thought about it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lord. What about Jerusalem? I've already decided that. I'm not going to ride the motor again and sit in there. And they said, I saw that. I, when you preach, I saw something. Our self righteousness can let a lot of souls go to hell. No. Look at Jesus Christ came there and eat with prostitutes. One day, Jesus Christ was sitting in somebody's house eating. And a woman walked there and started, and started I mean, wiping, break some expensive perfume. And then that's why Jesus betrayed him because Jesus said, You perfume, we don't break it, we spray it. <laughs> How can you break a perfume? You spray it small, small. You break it, no. You have to be betrayed. We, don't, we, we are not going to allow you to live on this. You betray him straight. And, and, and while she was doing that, all the religious people were sitting there. If he's a true prophet, she will know. It has not stopped. He's still in church. Yeah. One day I was there in church. They came to me and said, there is a girl who has been coming to church. They don't like the way he dressed. Hmm. And when I look at the girl's dressing too, hey, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and the Lord told me, say, shut up. And God asked me a question. I was also, okay. If a prostitute in circle get safe, what dress should they bring to church? Because all his dress is prostitution dress. What dress? There is some message I'm going to preach to you one day. It's called sacrificial love. Wow. If all of us will step into that love, nobody will divorce his wife. Amen. We will handle the woman God has given to us where? Amen. I'm telling you. All the men breaking their marriage, one day they will answer to God. That's the truth. It's That's not the woman. So no. True. When the garden of when the car in the garden of Eden had an accident, God went straight to the man. What was it? So I was sitting there, I say, I look at the dress, I was going to cause judgment. The Lord said, shut up. So I called the lady. For some reason, he even happened to come to me. And he said, everybody's watching me. I don't want to come here again. He said, I listen to your preaching. You're preaching so much about holiness. Actually, I'm a prostitute. And I walk into church. But I'm now trying to sew some dresses. This is what I have. I said, wow. He said, I came with another friend, but as for him, he said, people are watching us too much, so he has stopped coming to church. Do you know we have driven people away from church and the devil? Our attitude. That's one of the things I learned about this man, a woman of God that helped me a lot. I'm telling you. I didn't know how to hack people. Where I'm coming from, you don't hack. <laughs> And this is the way you hug. If you are hugging a woman, like the way Pastor, Pastor Joe taught me how to hug. Where I'm coming from, you hug a woman like this. And then you... Oh. Anyway, let me get out of here. One day, a girl was coming to church, and I said, oh, how are you doing? And I gave her a hug. He was standing in front of me, crying. I felt so bad. I said, this thing Pastor Jim, Pastor Paul taught me, I think it's not going to happen. <laughs> I, need, I need to take it, I need to drop it. <laughs> the girl came back to me after church and he said, Daddy, since I was born, nobody has ever hugged me. Oh. And for it to come from, you see, something broke up inside. Wow. Me. I used to feel nobody likes me. Oh. A hug can bring deliverance. Yes. I feel like going to the street and say, everybody come back. <laughs> There's something about walking to a place and you feel like you are accepted. I know, right? Jesus, man of God. Yes. One of the greatest battles we are fighting is rejection. Yes. It can affect you. That is what I was talking to you. Eh? I was sitting down with you. I said, we need that kind of your ministry. Some of the people you came to Ghana, you pray for them, hugging them. Yes. It broke something inside them. We have preached and lay hands and nothing happens. Because sometimes eh, it is easy to mend a wound, yes. a wound that is outside. 
you can easily use all the iodine. I don't know how they call it, but in my country it's called iodine. And then you use it, and then you can stitch it. But when the wound is in the soul, And listen, I have a lot of messages to preach here. I, I, I told God, he said, why is this faith we are confessing not working? So that it doesn't work. Name it and claim it. You name it, that thing is running away. <laughs> no, I, is somebody understanding what I'm talking about? Have you ever named something, name it, and this thing is going reverse? Pra, pra, pra. Why are you going? I'm naming you, come, and you are going where? Oh, man. I said one day, I said, Lord, what is happening? The Lord said, it's not just about faith. It's worked by love. So one of the reasons our faith is not working is that our love is off. People are confessing things, but they don't talk to somebody. It's in the church. It's there. People are sitting in church within their marriage, but their roommate. It's gone. You say, I shouldn't stop. You hear things. <laughs> That's what it is. The Lord told me, he said, son, it's not a matter of that. You, you, you can't bribe me with fasting. Wow. Let me see love in your heart. Amen. You can't just come and confess it and take it to drop. Faith worked by love. Yes, sir. Right. That is why I say, three things were by faith, hope, and love. The greatest, he didn't say the important, the greatest is love. The rest in love, oh, oh, Faith, hope. Come here. You look like. Did I say, you don't look like love. This is your body. Come and stand on this. Stop. Do you also do that thing? Eh? So yours is just a beggar. Okay, no problem. Faith, hope, and love. And God is saying this one is the greatest. Why? The reason is this. This and this cannot work without this. So this one's depend on this. But this one doesn't need this. So you're saying that no matter how this guy become a giant, you will still need this. Faith. So a lot of people are in the church confessing their faith. Their life is off. The fruit of the spirit is not there. Look at the way the King James put it. Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 22. Look at the way. Watch the King James version of that scripture. Have you ever taken notice of it? Eh? There, is a, there is a helping verb there. And the way, the first time I saw it there. Eh, where is the lady? <laughs> Which man has gone to sack the lady from there? Have you watched it? The fruit of the spirit. I thought it's supposed to be ah. This look like a plural stuff. So the fruit of the spirit is not the fruit of the spirit is one. When you have the one, it will bear the other ones. So watch this. You didn't catch what I said. The fruit of the spirit is love. But if love is there, joy will automatically flow. Peace will flow. Self-control will flow. This one will flow. what it is. So, look at the way the original translation put it. He could have said the proofs of the spirit. Ah! It is what you want. It's a singular verb. And you are English speaking people. So you know better. Coming from local authority, primarily from Ghana. The fruit of the spirit is love. So, nobody can have joy if they don't have love. Nobody can have peace if they don't have love. No, 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 no. no. That's why Jesus was never confused because the guy was walking in love. You can't provoke him. You can't confuse him. You can't do anything to get Jesus angry. Never. Never. This is where well. love your enemy. Love who? <laughs> Bless them that curse you. No, Jesus, wait a second. Where are you coming from? Somebody's pronouncing a curse on me. I should bless the person. Love. Somebody came to me one day and said, Prophet. I said, Yes. 
And when I say prophet, you know it's coming from America. Prophet. <laughs> I say, yes, sir. He said, I, I don't understand something. I say, yes, sir. I, I, I can help. Hey, why is it that? You know the Bible. I say, well, a little bit. God said, we should love our wives. He that was tell the woman also to love us. But he didn't tell the woman to love us. He said, we should love them. I said, sit down. Wisdom is too high for the fool. Let me give you some wisdom. <laughs> Do you have a mobile phone here? Do you have a calculator on your mobile phone? Okay, when you punch one plus one, what does it give to you? Will you manipulate the, 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 the calculator to give you an answer, three dog? Will it work? No. So you see that? You see, the reason I would write my name, Nana say, the computer underlined it is that it doesn't have it inside. So you put a red pen, this foolish name, where is it coming from? Nana say, it doesn't have it. But when you put in Paul, and you put in nothing, it will allow you to go. <laughs> mm? But once you write, Bedi Ako, he say, oh, Jesus. <laughs> pa, 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 dot, dot, and underline. Now. <laughs> so I told the guy, I said that only the manufacturer can talk about the product. It is God that manufactured us. Yes. And God created women like computers. If you study the Bible carefully, I don't want to go into other scriptures. So the reason why God says love your wife is that a woman will give back to you what you give to her. It's very simple. So when you, God says you don't need her to love you. You love her, he will naturally give it back to you. Because you see, God created them to be receivers. And receivers also can give. Because you can't give what you don't have. That is why you give them a seed, they give you a baby. So you see, once you love it, that is why the Bible says love covers multitude of wrongs. So when you love people, you don't even see their negative side. That's right. That's the truth. The reason why we are, we are just judging ourselves and that and he and he and he and he. You see, when, this is what the church is. The church, somebody can be strong in one area and is using that to judge another person in the place that the person is weak. So I, I know I have a problem with last, but you are also a thief. Sit down. I have finished preaching. And I come for my books. I have clothes. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Yes. So, you see, we are, we are working a lot of deception in the church. And we can come back and judge people and tell them, we, we, we. But you see, the law, that is why God, Jesus summarized the law and said the law is this way. You, if you love the Lord, that's why I tell people, like, hey, don't, don't try and marry somebody who doesn't love God. Is dangerous. This is a foundation. If you, you want, how many of you are not married? Give me a wave. You are not married. Young, guess oh wow, a lot of bachelors. I bless God. Hallelujah. Lord, give the, the, the ladies. Give me a wave. Give me a wave. The ladies. You want a man that loves you? This is the first thing you have to get. If you can get a man marry you who loves God, right? He loves God. She loves to come to church. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all thy soul, with all thy might, and with all thy strength. If you can do that, then you can love your neighbor, ask yourself. Now, one day I told my wife, I said, girl, the background, the family background I come from, I am in the first place not supposed to love you. It's a womanizing family. We, I, don't, I, I come from a family, you don't keep one wife. You don't. No. No, I have uncles who have nine children, all of them are from different mothers. But I'm loving you because of the love I have for God. I said, don't take it for granted at all. You see, if all of us, there is nothing good in us. The only good thing in us is Christ. Yeah. If you take Jesus out of any of us, hey, this boy preaching, if you take Jesus out of me, you see the way I'm walking? Man. That's what the Bible says, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Amen. If you take Christ out of us, so, you see, don't marry the guy because he has a good job. No. You see, sometimes when I'm preaching, eh, when I was preaching, there was a woman who was almost about 55 years, maybe about 57. Whilst I was preaching, I was crying. He came to me and said, Prof, I wish I was hearing this when I was a young girl. I pray that these young guys will not take it for granted. In the multitude of counseling, there is safety. 
You see, when we are telling you this, you want to laugh. And the guy is good, and he works at Westminster. Hey! <laughs> Take your time, Westminster. Okay. You will leave, you will leave you and work and go to Waterloo. Is that how you call it? <laughs> By the time you get to Tottenham, you are finished. <laughs> now listen to me very carefully. Make sure the guy loves God. Listen, you see. It's not that some of the guys that are married, they are messing with their wife. What is absent in their life is Christ. Right. Yes. And the character of Christ. If you see somebody who loves God, and if he is broke, and he has a vision, he will change his destiny with that. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, I was going to marry my wife, it was a concern. I'll end with that. Very much concern. You see, my wife has, he's a fourth child of his father and mother. He has a senior brother. He's married. His wife, they were doing, you work in Bank of Ghana. Then the next one married an army officer. At the time the guy was marrying his big sister, he was a, he was a major. He married and they became a colonel. And you see, in Ghana, when you are a colonel in the army, you are heavy duty. They drive you. You sit in army car green, and then you are going, one bodyguard, two bodyguards, one that pistol, long gown, short gown. You, know, you are fine, no problem. And then the next sister that my wife comes after also, he married. Both he and his husband work in Bank of Ghana. This one is in the audit session. He was that time a secretary to the governor or something. They got married. And then my wife is the next, and brought this slim pastor. Hey. <laughs> one day my father-in-law looked at me and said, Pastor, <laughs> Do you eat? I say yes. <laughs> because now I have double my size. <laughs> no, let me close. You people are ready to hear. So it, it was like, you see, there is a picture that is coming on. My wife was so confused. I remember when I came to the West, I'm so confused. Oh, my family. Hey. I used to tell her, I said, girl, this guy, I'm telling you, God will bless me. I said, God is going to bless me. Look at him. When I say God bless you, look at me down. Look at me down. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is, this is, the, this is the, the last word that break the back of a camel. I remember my first preaching appointment. Then I invited her and her cousins. I had, a, I had a suit. Uh, it was a wine King Prince. Do you know King Prince? <laughs> now, the real name is I Hate Fire. You can't iron it. When you put fire on it, it's called Mitrija. That's how we call it. Again. Once you put fire on it, it'll burn. That's the material. So, now my wife said, the problem was not even the suit. I was wearing a red shoe with a yellow socks <laughs> at that time. And he said, when you put your leg and I show the sauce, I just bow down. <laughs> and he said, one of my cousins, who is, you know, some people, they say, Ivy, hey, look at the sauce. <laughs> Powerful one. <laughs> but you see, there was, you know, later, it was like a lot of battles were going on in the house. He came to me so depressed. But he said, there is something about you. You fear God and you love God. He says, for that one, I, I, he said, I mean, and, and there was another guy also chasing her from where his sisters work in the central bank. And so there's a competition. Now, somebody gave me a car without a starter. So you can't. And when I used to visit her, I can't put off the engine because, so I didn't really caught well. How I did you do your divorce in her? The car engine is on and it's running. I must, I'll see you. But uh, <laughs> one day, and it was a diesel car and the engine was very old and it was smoking. So one day I went there, my father, I said, oh, sir, you have a call. He said, your car. <laughs> so the smoke coming out of my car has given my father-in-law This. And, and he said, and, and, and I'm telling you, the fear of God has the capacity to pick you from zero. Yes. Yes. 
Oh, Liza Zuzana Matukaya. Rezevezea Mazunimi Antukaya. Los Livazia Maze Animatoya. Rekazuya Namasoya. Hey, Yakoya. Pray for grace. Lift your two hands and pray for grace. Lord, grace. So happy.